कैन यू हियर मी हेलो बेटा यस मैम हेलो आई कैन हियर यू मैम ओके सो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस लैरिंग्स टुडे बेटा सो इन कंटिन्यूएशन विद हेड एंड टॉपिक्स ओके so we will see the introduction we'll see a part of development skeletal framework subdivision muscles histology blood supply nerve supply lymphatic drainage and applied anatomy larynx is actually a very important question it can come as an essay also okay so situation where is the larynx situated right in front of the neck isn't it the larynx so we have like measurements male larynx so when you see this vertical dimension it is 44 mm transverse dimension 43 mm anterior posterior it is 36 mm for female it is 36 41 and 26 the same thing now i see actually when you talk about development like it is formed from laryngotracheal tube okay so what are these pharyngeal arches so at the level of pharyngeal arches you will see the formation of the laryngotracheal tube okay so ventral wall of primitive pharynx like from the 28th day of development from fourth arch you will see the cartilages like thyroid cartilage cuneiform corniculate fifth arch cricoid cartilage sixth arch retinoid cartilage epiglottis if you remember the development of tongue it is formed from the caudal part of hypobranchial eminence okay then we have muscles developed from fourth and sixth arches okay chavi we are we just started larynx beta no okay generally we uh, the larynx if sa is not coming it may also come for three marks only this slide they will ask you name the laryngeal cartilages so you should be able to talk about names just paired and unpaired cartilages the paired cartilages are two in number like you can see here arytenoid the bigger one triangular above which you can see two are resting we have what are this Cartilage above this you will find cuneiform. Okay, sometimes we may have a remnant also, which is called called as cartilage or tracheia. Okay, so the bigger one, the larger one among these paired ones are arytenoid. Over which one above the other you have cartilage, cuneiform, and cartilage or tracheia. Okay, then we have unpaired ones. That means only single single. You can see here. So what is this? We have epiglottis. We have thyroid cartilage. and we have this one is cricoid cartilage okay thyroid epiglottis and cricoid these are unpaired arytenoid corniculate cuneiform and cartilago tracheia are the paired cartilages now when you describe each cartilage sometimes see the largest among all looks this right this is quite prominent in men you call it as adams apple no so the prominent cartilage what we have in neck is the thyroid cartilage so this thyroid cartilage when you look it has two leaf like like you can see these are expanded areas which are called as laminae okay the right and left laminae the two laminae are fusing in the midline and they form a prominence in the midline this midline prominence is very clear in men you call it as laryngeal eminence or laryngeal prominence okay just at the upper part of the laryngeal prominence you are finding a notch that is thyroid notch when you see the two laminae which are sloping downwards backwards and laterally the laminae are projecting upwards like there is a projection like this which are called as horns or carnu you can use the word carnu or you can you also use the word horns okay so we have like superior carnu and inferior carnu so this is the anterior lateral view that means part of the anterior view and part of the lateral view you can see this becomes laryngeal prominence this is the lamina of the thyroid cartilage this is the thyroid notch this is the superior horn inferior horn now we know this is hyoid bone so connecting the thyroid cartilage and hyoid bone you are finding a membrane you call it as thyrohyoid membrane the thyrohyoid membrane is thickened in the middle and also laterally so in the middle the thickening is called as median thyrohyoid ligament laterally lateral thyrohyoid ligament okay within this thyrohyoid like lateral thyrohyoid ligament sometimes it may become 
लाइक सम कार्टिलेज में गेट डिपॉजिटेड कॉन्ट्रोसाइट्स में फंक्शन ही है लीडिंग टू द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द फोर्थ पेयर्ड कार्टिलेज दैट इज द कार्टिलेज जो क्रिटिशिया ओके सो दैट इज अबाउट नो व्हेन यू कम डाउन दिस इज थायराइड कार्टिलेज एंड दिस इज क्रिकॉइड कार्टिलेज कनेक्टिंग द थायराइड एंड क्रिकॉइड कार्टिलेज अगेन यू हैव अ मेम्ब्रेन ओके यू कॉल इट अस क्रिकोथायराइड मेम्ब्रेन दिस इज isn't it this is cricoid and this is thyroid that's why you call it as cricothyroid membrane again you have a thickening in the middle same name you call it as median cricothyroid ligament literally also you have two thickenings you call it as lateral cricothyroid ligament the membrane's names and the ligament's names are same now once you observe the thyrohyoid membrane you are finding laterally there is an opening obviously this side also there will be an opening so this is an aperture which allows the passage of internal laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal artery internal laryngeal nerve goes inside to supply the interior of larynx and also superior laryngeal artery it also goes inside to supply the interior of larynx okay so you are finding thyroid cartilage very nicely cricoid cartilage below which you are finding tracheal rings have started now uh, if you observe this is the anterior view right when you observe the anterior part of the cricoid cartilage it is narrow and it looks like an arch that's why you call it as arch of cricoid but if you see this is the arch okay but when you see behind this is like a signet ring ring signet ring mm. so anteriorly it is like an arch and posteriorly it is quite broad okay that is called as lamina posteriorly lamina and anteriorly arch that's how the cricoid cartilage looks okay now this is the posterior aspect of the thyroid cartilage you can see okay only one half of the thyroid cartilage is shown superior inferior horns and this is the oblique line okay these dots have been shown to represent the muscle attachments which i will discuss as we proceed okay this picture will help us to understand this big cartilage what you are finding is thyroid cartilage okay behind we have arytenoid cartilages okay this leaf like cartilage is epiglottis connecting the epiglottis and arytenoid cartilage you have a membrane you call it as quadrangular membrane okay and the medial thickenings of this quadrangular membrane there is a ligament you can see this is medial most line you call it as vocal ligament as you move little laterally you have the vestibular ligament this i will again elaborate but you should know there are certain connections between epiglottis and arytenoid broadly speaking quadrangular membrane medial thickenings from medial to lateral we have vocal ligament and vestibular ligament okay mm. then so between the cricoid cartilage and uh, this vocal cords there is this membrane you call it as crico vocal membrane crico vocal membrane actually arytenoid cartilages when we see it will have certain processes i will show you this will help in opening and closing of this vocal cords the muscles will be here which will help in closing and opening of this vocal cords which helps in production of voice this opening is called as rima glottidis that means the opening between the two vocal folds or vocal ligaments you are finding this opening that is the rima glottidis now this is a, like wherever pictures are there i am trying to make you understand this is again lateral view okay in the lateral view you can see this cricothyroid muscle is attached okay so if you remember we have ribbon muscles or strap muscles what we have seen in the neck you remember sternothyroid thyrohyoid thyrohyoid um, then omohyoid isn't it do you remember so these blue lines are actually representing those strap muscles ribbon flat muscles thyrohyoid sternothyroid okay thyropharyngeus is one of the muscles of pharynx i will teach you when i break the pharynx lecture today we are doing larynx you see here beta it's it's, it's a very beautiful representation of how larynx looks okay see this is something section of uh, thyroid cartilage you can see it has been cut at the laryngeal eminence or the laryngeal prominence so this is leaf like cartilage which is epiglottis apex of epiglottis is in contact with the laryngeal eminence isn't it posterior posterior aspect of laryngeal eminence what is this cartilage which is like a signet ring 
मस्कुलर प्रोसेस वोकल प्रोसेस okay these two processes names are important okay so resting over the upper border of the lamina of the cricoid cartilage we have arytenoid cartilage over the arytenoid we have carniculate okay over which we will have cuneiform cartilages okay beta okay. so that is very very important so this epiglottis and at the upper part you have the place now if you remember the class of tongue what we have studied I told you this is the epiglottis, and there is a structure connecting the pharyngeal part of the tongue. This posterior one third is the pharyngeal part, no? Anterior two thirds is oral part. Connecting the pharyngeal part of the tongue and epiglottis, we have certain glossoepiglottic folds, three in number. Middle one is medial glossoepiglottic fold. Two lateral ones are lateral glossoepiglottic folds. Between the medial and lateral glossoepiglottic folds, you are finding depressions. Very good, Mali Kile. Okay, now why are we talking about it? Because again, this is epiglottis, and these are the that means epiglottis has connections with tongue. I recently taught you about deglutition also. Now, how important the epiglottis is closing the inlet of larynx so that food is not entering into the larynx anteriorly. So much, so many functions this epiglottis has to do. because it is in the place where we have that is the laryngopharynx there you it's a common passage for food and air so it should work properly to close the laryngeal inlet during the process of deglutition if you can recollect that point will be useful for you see something like this this is signet ring as hema told us this is anteriorly arch posteriorly lamina this is the posterior view which you can see quite broad this is the anterior view arch posterior view is lamina upper border lower border upper border you can find like there are facets for the articulation of arytenoid cartilage okay so if you remember this is i told you horns or carno this is the inferior so inferior horn or inferior carno is actually articulating at this middle point of the lateral aspect of the cricoid cartilage articulation with thyroid cartilage is here okay posteriorly if you observe see behind the larynx we have a tube no that is for esophagus okay the posterior aspect of the lamina it gives attachment to this uh, cricoarytenoid muscle cricoarytenoid okay this is inferior constrictor muscle is also here cricothyroid you can see laterally anterolaterally okay beta so these are the different views which will help us to understand the laryngeal cartilages hope you understood this yes ma'am okay okay beta so now we will see certain joints also between the cricoid and the thyroid cart i told you in the middle of the lateral aspect of the cricoid we have a facet no for the inferior horn the name of the joint is cricothyroid joint cricothyroid joint okay then similarly between the upper part we also have arytenoid cartilage i said so between the arytenoid and corniculate again there will be a joint so we call it as arytenoid corniculate joint crico arytenoid that means between the cricoid cartilage and the arytenoid you call it as crico arytenoid actually this crico arytenoid joint along with the muscles like posterior crico thyroid and all they take very important part in controlling the inlet of larynx okay now mm -hmm. see here um, we have certain membranes and ligaments so the extrinsic uh, membranes and ligaments are you have from outside we have thyrohyoid membrane do you remember just now i told you this is this one right is mm -hmm. it thyrohyoid membrane so thickening sir median thyrohyoid ligament lateral thyrohyoid then cricothyroid membrane median cricothyroid ligament lateral cricothyroid ligament isn't it The list is given. Okay, thyroid, cricotracheal. Like these are all extrinsic. From outside, if you see, you call it as extrinsic. When you see quadrangular membrane, I have shown you from inside that beautiful picture. If you remember this one, quadrangular membrane, vocal cords, 
vestibular ligament, then cricovocal membrane. So those are all seen from inside. You call it as something like intrinsic. Okay, we have extrinsic and intrinsic. So this is again written here. This is thyroid, this is cricothyroid. Between the cricoid and trachea, this one you call it as cricotracheal. Okay, the thickenings are called as ligaments. Then extrinsic, you can see from outside also. Apart from this, you have this hyoepiglottic ligament. From the hyoid bone to the epiglottis, you have a connection. This is this section. Coronal section you are finding, sagittal type of section you are finding. Try to understand this is tongue, hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage, then tracheal rings. This is anterior part. Then behind, posterior. What is this lamina of cricoid? Arch is narrow, lamina is wide. Isn't it? Cook. Uh, so this is epiglottis. This picture is interior of larynx. This you are supposed to draw if question comes. Usually it comes as five marks question letter, interior of larynx. Try to understand the concept thoroughly. Tongue, then hyoid bone, below this thyroid cartilage, below this cricoid, below this tracheal rings. Okay? So when you see this is leaf-like cartilage which is in connection with the tongue. You remember valiculin? Yes. Okay. So this is the lamina of cricoid. Over the lamina of cricoid, do you remember we have arytenoid cartilages, above which we have corniculate, above which we have cuneiform. Okay, they are now shown all covered with mucous membrane. That's why the bluish uh, cartilage thing is not shown. Now see here, beta, what are the various folds? Airy epiglottic fold. Airy means arytenoid. Epiglottis is the cartilage. Between them, the name of the fold is airy epiglottic fold. Mm -hmm. Okay, then now see here between the thyroid cartilage and the epiglottis, also there is a thickening. Membrane is thickening only, you call it as thyroepiglottic ligament. Between the hyoid bone and epiglottis, also you call it as hyoepiglottic ligament. This mucous membrane of the interior of the larynx is thickened and it is forming a fold actually. Okay. You have the vestibular and vocal folds. This is vestibular fold, this is vocal fold. In between the empty space, you call it as sinus of larynx or ventricle of larynx. Okay? Ventricle or sinus of larynx. So this is the mucosa beta. This whole thing is mucosal covering of the interior of trachea. Okay, tracheal tube. This is that means larynx is now leading into trachea. Trachea will lead into bronchi, right left bronchus, and then into lungs, isn't it? So, so this is you are seeing from inside. This lot of confusion will be there, but I have taken different pictures to try to make you understand. I hope the orientation of picture is clear. This is anterior end, hyoid bone, thyroid lamina, cricoid arch, cricoid lamina, arytenoid cartilage, corniculate cartilage, isn't it? This is epiglottis. Okay, now see what are the membranes in between. We have quadrangular membrane. Okay, like this. So over this quadrangular ligament uh, membrane only, you are finding thickenings. Vestibular fold, lower down, you call it as vocal fold. Between them, you call it as sinus of larynx. Or in the previous picture, it was called ventricle of larynx. The same folds only between. Is it clear? Because interior of larynx will be asked. Now this picture I have taken from Vishram Singh. You can study from any book. We have certain muscles. I'll show you the muscles and then we will go. Then you will understand it more clearly. Yeah. See here, beta. This is from outside, isn't it? So you are finding this is what uh, cartilage? Cricoid cartilage, isn't it? Arch, hmm? lateral aspect, and lamina. So from the cricoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage, there is a muscle seen from outside. This is the only one which is seen from outside. That's why you call it as extrinsic muscle, cricothyroid muscle. Between cricoid and thyroid cartilages, that's why cricothyroid muscle. Okay? <clears throat> this is the posterior view. You can see the broad lamina of the cricoid cartilage. This is posterior cricoarytenoid. 
Okay, similarly, lateral cricoarytenoid, oblique arytenoids also will be there. This is lateral cricoarytenoid. Okay, the crossing one above the other. Like see, this is lamina, these are arytenoids. From right side to left, from left side to right, you have <coughs> this oblique arytenoid muscle. Okay, this is transverse arytenoid muscle. This is all posterior view only. And see these arytenoids, how they are being opened and closed to control the voice mechanism. Okay, that is. So these are our vocal folds. Laterally, we have vestibular folds. Okay, now you can see how they are just closing and opening to bring about. See, this is adduction, this is abduction. Okay, so when the air is allowed to pass inside, then only you will see the voice is generated. So like that, you have different shapes of vocal cords. So during phonation, vocal cords are adducted and like you are finding stridulating as if air is forced between them and the vestibular folds will open. Okay. So they are open when we are whispering. So, so before I go to cavity of larynx, I'll go back again from the table. See, these are the various muscles, but I told you the one only outside is cricothyroid. Okay, extending from the cricoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage. Okay, posterior cricoarytenoid we have seen laterally, transversely, obliquely, thyroid in arytenoid and vocalis. These are the various muscles. Larynx can come as an essay question, so you should know the origin, direction of fibers, insertion. Okay, then muscles acting on larynx suppose elevation of larynx thyrohyoid mylohyoid depression of larynx sternothyroid sternohyoid like that this picture also i have taken from ashwamsen okay very easy you can i want you to practice this table for origin insertion i want you to practice this table for the action of muscles because it's very important okay then this is coronal section but when you cut it like this this way okay again so get the orientation of the picture see this is thyroid cartilage this is also thyroid okay then this is cricoid cartilage these are the brachial rings okay here the hyoid bone is cut we know this leaf like cartilage is epiglottis okay so here again you are finding those same folds in different picture in fact. These are vestibular folds, vocal folds. This cavity is the sinus of larynx. This is the interior of the trachea which has just started. Okay, quadrangular membranes thickenings only these are. The upper thickening is vestibular fold, lower thickening is vocal fold. Okay, that is. So this all epiglot is only this uh, controlling of arytenoids. That's why they have vocal processes, muscular processes controlled by transverse arytenoid, oblique arytenoid, isn't it? So these are the various muscles which are controlling these arytenoid cartilages to abduct, adduct, and produce different pitch and intensity of sounds. Okay, all these are not required, but are pre-epiglotic, para and sub-epiglotic. So outside muscles, we already we have discussed these muscles like sternothyroid from sternum to thyroid cartilage, then sternohyoid from sternum to hyoid bone, thyrohyoid from thyroid cartilage to hyoid bone. These are depressors, elevators. Now actually this picture has been taken from behind. Again, this is also cutting like this only. That means coronal section. See, actually if you understand, it's a very beautiful picture. See, half of the side you are seeing mucosa intact, the other half, the mucosa has been lifted up. Very much thin way it has been dissected to show the underlying muscle. So that means from when you see from behind, we have three subdivisions of pharynx in fact. This is nasal cavity, we are, this is skull bone better, skull bone, okay, cranial fossa, posterior cranial fossa. Okay, this is nose, nasal septum. We are finding these are concave, shelf-like projections. That means this area is nasopharynx. This is posterior view. You have cut and you are seeing from behind. Same specimen is there in Apollo. You can have a look in fact. Such a beautiful specimen there you have. This is palate beta, soft palate. This is uvula. This is tongue, pharyngeal part of the tongue. That means this is oropharynx. These are palatine tonsils. 
we know this is epiglottis. Of course, we have connections, median and lateral glossoepiglottic folds. Okay, I told you just now we have these membranes, quadrangular, certain thickenings. When you just peel it off the membrane, you are finding certain muscles, oblique retinoid, transverse retinoid muscles. Okay, thyroepiglottis, epiglottis muscles. If you remember, I told you thyrohyoid membrane has one hole, no? Through which you will see superior laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal artery are coming inside to supply the interior of larynx. Okay, posterior cricoaritinoid muscle. The other muscles you are finding extremely are the pharyngeal muscles, superior constrictor, middle constrictor, inferior constrictor. These constrictor muscles will continue as esophagus. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is one behind the other. Larynx is in front. Behind the larynx, you have pharynx. Okay, in the pharynx, we have superior, middle, and inferior constrictor muscles. Inferior constrictor mm -hmm. continues as esophagus. Okay, mm -hmm. now if you just observe here, you are finding as though there is pocket on the lateral aspect of epiglottis. This is actually called as pyriform recess or pyriform fossa. In olden days, when vigilance was not so strict in airport and all, people used to carry diamonds, drugs, and all precious things with the help of ENTs. Okay, smuggling was very common by hiding the things in pyriform recess or pyriform fossa. That's why it's also called a smuggler's fossa. Okay, mm -hmm. that is. So these are the muscles uh, which you can see from this view. And the elevators, uh, of this uh, larynx, you have palatopharyngeus and stylopharyngeus. These are actually muscles of palate you are finding here. Elevator really palatini, palatopharyngeus. This is salpingopharyngeus. This picture has so many things to teach, in fact. So, intrinsic muscles, you just read this, that table better. These pictures are only to make you understand like this is posterior cricoaritinoid. Cricothyroid, which is from outside, okay, lateral cricoaritinoid, okay, oblique arytenoid, transverse arytenoid, okay, then thyroaritinoid muscles we have. That means from the thyroid cartilage to the arytenoid, we have thyroaritinoid, okay. Then we have the other connecting muscles, which are vocalis, okay. So, and these are the actions which one table I have told you, right, to memorize and practice. So that is actually helping in all these actions, okay? So cavity of larynx is placed obliquely. Just go through these points. This I have taken from Chaurasya only. And I have told you all the points. If you want to practice this diagram, this is taken from Chaurasya only. Whatever you feel is good. But the realistic picture is this. This is how the interior of larynx looks, in fact. This is how it looks. This is how it looks. One is sagittal section and the other is coronal section. But for our convenience, textbook pictures are always something different only. Because now you have understood the concepts, I hope you will be able to write. Okay? So, okay, let me explain this picture also. Thyroid cartilage, this is. This is cricoid cartilage. These are tracheal rings and this is epiglottis. We know this is quadrangular membrane, which is thick and upwards to form vestibular fold. Lower, it is vocal fold. In between, you have ventricular the sinus of larynx. Okay, the other membranes, we have conus elasticus. You just go through this picture and you can put in your own words. In fact, it's not so tough also. Just go through once. Okay. Now, coming to the nerve supply. We know this is the membrane. Like, what is the name of the membrane? Thyrohyoid membrane, no? There is an opening in the thyrohyoid membrane. You can see this is the superior laryngeal nerve which is passing through this opening. Now it is called as internal laryngeal nerve. The one which is going outside is external laryngeal nerve. So all the muscles of uh, larynx will be supplied by the internal laryngeal nerve only, except the one which is lying outside. What is the muscle which is lying outside? Cricothyroid. Very good. Cricothyroid. It is supplied by which nerve? External laryngeal. External. Both the external and internal are the branches of superior laryngeal nerve. Superior laryngeal nerve is a branch of which nerve? 
vagus okay. vagus right tenth cranial nerve okay so internal laryngeal nerve which is going and supplying the inside of larynx it is sensory external laryngeal nerve is motor supplying in muscle no recurrent laryngeal nerve is also again one of the branches coming from vagus which is both sensory and motor okay and this see this is common carotid it is dividing into external line internal carotid artery so from the external carotid artery we have superior thyroid artery if you remember from superior thyroid artery you have a branch which is going inside this hole thyroid membrane what is that superior laryngeal artery along with internal laryngeal nerve okay mm. yes. so blood supply inferior laryngeal artery which is a branch actually coming from the subclavian artery thyro cervical trunk okay mm -hmm. venous drainage the upper part of larynx drains into superior thyroid vein the lower part of the larynx drains into inferior thyroid vein so we know superior thyroid vein drains into this what is the name of this vein internal jugular internal jugular and what is where is the inferior thyroid vein draining into brachiocephalic right and left brachiocephalic okay. no okay. which goes into superior vena cava okay fine mm -hmm. then upper part of the lymphatics they are going into deep cervical groove okay below vertical component lower part they are going into posterior inferior group of lymph nodes okay so histology suprol is all not required beta epiglottis nobody will ask us applied anatomy we will see see whenever there is any infection and inflammation when you use the word you remember itis bronchitis mm. no so suppose if the laryngeal cartilages are becoming very soft tender then you call that condition as laryngomalacia sometimes cyst may be formed sometimes there may be out pouching you call it as laryngo seal okay sometimes vocal cords may be paralyzed which nerve is damaged internal laryngeal nerve isn't it so malacia is always word which is used to show like it becomes very weak okay osteomalacia means bones become very weak right laryngo malacia is cartilages they become very much thin they are they become as if they are flexible still they become very much weak okay sometimes there may be cysts like this okay bigger ones are laryngo seals okay air filled dilation of saccule okay sometimes you may find a web formation like this okay like that we have sometimes there may be narrowing of this vocal cords which you call as stenosis okay laryngoscopy is a technique with the help of which an instrument with the help of which we will see the interior of larynx what are you seeing here beta vocal cords only no vestibular folds vocal folds okay so the mirror ent doctors will be have you seen ent is always they hold a mirror over their head yes ma'am ha uh, like that that is the laryngoscope okay this is this is how it looks okay so teachers and also singers who use their voice a lot okay they may have this type of like uh, nodule formations which are called as singers or screamers or clergyman's nodules okay sometimes there may be inflammation of this vocal cords you call it as rinkis edema okay mm -hmm. so all these are not required these are actually too much do you if you remember deglutition i told you epiglottis is very important no so that the food is not regurgitating so it should go into esophagus but if it is coming into larynx then it will lead to obstruction isn't it very dangerous choking person may die also immediately so in case now it is covid is so common isn't it and it is specially attacking lungs so in such case where the respiratory efforts are not being carried out when oxygen supply is not proper we can give it from outside by just opening here that is laryngotomy otomy means always opening of the larynx okay this is inflammation you can see basically it should be something like this gradually the space is reducing okay sometimes it may be completely closed okay there may be cancers also of the vocal cords malignancy okay so i told you many things only intrinsic muscle of larynx placed outside is 
Glycothyronate. This is the only muscle supplied by external laryngeal nerve. Okay, pyriforms fossa is also smuggler's fossa. Diamonds, something like that can be. Okay. Primary function of larynx is respiration and phonation was developed as evolution. It's related to motor speech area of cerebral cortex. Okay, but I hope you understood. Yes, ma'am. Okay, but I'll stop here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, ma'am, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, 